a normal slowdown. But we do what we like to buy some high-quality utilities. They're nice, consistent companies, big dividends, what's not to like. But this slowdown is different. With vast swaths of the economy simply shut down, there's substantially less demand for actual power, which puts real pressure on the utilities. Consider the case of Public Service Enterprise Group. That's a power generation and transmission business in the Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, a lot of Jersey. Last Monday, PSE&G reported a mixed quarter. It's a big revenue miss, coupled with uh, enough cost savings to generate a modest earnings beat. While the company was able to reaffirm its full-year guidance, management talked about a 5 to 7% reduction in electric load, of course, thanks to COVID-19. After rebounding for the March lows, the stock now uh, pulled back from 54 to 45 over the past few weeks, including a 4% decline. Now, at these levels, it gives you a bountiful 4.4% yield. So has it been punished enough? Let's take a closer look with Ralph Izzo. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Public Service Enterprise Group. To get a better sense of how his company's holding up, Mr. Izzo, welcome to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. Good to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Well, I got to tell you, sir, to have a five to seven percent decline, and that's the normalized electric load, is pretty incredible. I have to believe that most of the people in our area are working from home. Well, they are. So remember now, that's a decline in sales volume. That's not the same as a decline in margin. Uh, we're we're better insulated from a margin decline because our residential customers who are using a little more are a higher margin group than our commercial and than an industrial who are using a little less. So is the arbitrage positive for PSE and G? Not on a net basis, but it's not as it's not as negative as the five to seven percent would suggest. We've only had one month of data and we're unfortunate in New Jersey. We don't have automated meter reading. So we haven't given out details on the trade-off between customer groups until we get at least another cycle of information. All right. I know you're passionate about the environment. Uh, I will say that I have never seen so much wildlife in our area. I didn't know it existed. I thought it all had been extinct. You are. It was Earth Day, 50th anniversary. Your company is very committed to the environment. We, we are, Jim. And actually, I've seen some wild turkey in the back in the backyard. Yes, that's what I was talking about. Like flying right at me. Yep. You know, if, it, if there's one thing that maybe COVID-19 has shown us, it's the complexity associated with worldwide uh, challenges. And I think the biggest worldwide challenge we face and have, have yet to fully face it is climate change. So we have a fully integrated five-part plan that begins with energy efficiency, renewable energy, preservation of nuclear, getting a price on carbon, and then electrifying the economy as a way to make sure that we stem off the worst impacts of climate change in the future. Well, oh, Mr. So, do you think they will ever uh, build another nuclear power plant? The Salem plant's a great plant. And I know I'm just I've been pro nuke forever. And it just seems like that it's just too hard to build in this country. But it's the cleanest power in the world. Well, as you know, there, there is a company, a southern company, that's building a new nuclear plant. But they're a fully regulated business. I don't think you'll see a large nuclear plant built by a competitive business such as ours. Uh, there's a chance that small modular reactors in the future uh, could get built. Uh, but even that would require some recognition that uh, carbon costs money to emit and therefore the need for a price on carbon. Would you prefer offshore wind, as you mentioned in your conference call? Well, so offshore wind is less expensive than a new nuclear plant is today. But I'm telling you, the cheapest thing we could do, by far the cheapest thing we could do to help uh, mitigate against climate change is energy efficiency. Uh, offshore wind in New Jersey, its first tranche is going to be about $98 per megawatt hour. That's against a current market price of about $20 a megawatt hour. So it's a lot more expensive. Right. Uh, arguably, it's worth it, given the fact that it's carbon free. But energy efficiency can actually be done while reducing a customer bill. OK, so uh, I have a place in Summit and a place in Ocean Grove. So, you know, these areas, New Jersey. <laughs> and we do have I outages, do. sir. And you know that uh, I'm worried about hurricane season and I'm worried about uh, covid. I'm worried if you're going to have enough people to be able to fix the outages. Well, you should be worried about that. I'm worried about that, too, probably more than you are. We have enough people from the point of view of our employees. We're actually not who are doing a terrific job, but our employees are doing a terrific job of staying safe and healthy. But as you know, during a major storm, we don't rely only on our own people. We have to rely on people from other utilities and other contractors who are not affected by that particular storm. And right now, there is a reluctance on the part of others to move their personnel and subject them to possible 
of health consequences of COVID-19. So I am worried that if a big storm comes, our outage restoration times will be longer than uh, customers are accustomed to. At the same time, though, uh, for your work at home, you say that the customer service, you even said customer service is, is pretty darn good. It almost made me feel like maybe everybody should be staying at home all the time. You know, I'm always in awe of what our employees are able to do. Uh, but, but that's true. Uh, our call center statistics are improved with people working from home. Now, it's a little unfair because we were one of the first, if not the first utility, to promise to not shut any customers off. So we're not getting some of the call volume that we would normally get because we're not getting bill disputes or customers asking us to restore power. We haven't had a major storm. So so call volumes are down in general, but that doesn't take away from the fact that our employees are doing a great job. Do you think that uh, this, I know you've got more than New Jersey. I don't want to just limit to Jersey, but do you think that uh, that the governor is being too slow in opening uh, Jersey or is it the right pace as far as you're concerned? No, I, th- I think he's on the right pace. This is every jurisdiction that has opened up prematurely has had a second spike. I mean, just look at what happened in South Korea last week. One 29-year-old right. decides to go to five different uh, restaurants or nightclubs in one evening, and then 2,100 bars and restaurants have to reclose. So, and you heard Dr. Fauci yesterday that if we open too early, not only are there health consequences, but there would be ramifications for uh, the economy yet again, maybe worse than what we're experiencing now. So I think the governor is doing a stellar job and he's on the right pace. Excellent. By the way, hmm. I, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to all the health care providers who are just doing yeoman's work and protecting us and extend my condolences to anybody who's been affected by this horrible, horrible virus. Yeah, they have just been amazing. Uh, unsung yeah. and amazing. I want to thank Ralph Izzo, first time chairman, president, and CEO of Public Service Enterprise Group. The, my utility, obviously. We have money's back after the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.